Welcome to My Animal House. We're down here in the hide. Bang! I got an amazing DIY video for you today. We're going to do a DIY rodent warmer. Yep, rodent warmer. There's a little controversy on this. People think, oh my god, that's not right. And people don't like it. and Or they, they think it's too expensive. I think it's the most part it's too expensive. I think myself the idea is solid. I think the fact of warming the whole rodent up instead of just like half of it with a heat light or dunking it in water and trying to reheat the water all the time or using hair dryers like I said, you're still flipping it over. It's cold on this side, hot on this side. So it's just crazy. I think heating the whole entire rodent is the way to go. There is another company out there that makes a rodent warmer. And uh, it's not a DIY, but it's like 500 bucks. I'm not spending 500 bucks to warm some rodents, but I will make one. So we're going to go over that today. I'm going to show you how I made mine. We're going to use uh, basically just a stair light tub with a latching lid and, and, and some wire, heat tape, and a couple other things that we're, we'll go over that I'll use to make this. And um, I just want to show it to you and share it with you. So if you're new to this channel, um, please consider subscribing, liking this video, smacking that notification bell so you uh, get notified when I make other reptile related videos or DIY and things like that. So uh, let's get on to this video and I hope you enjoy it. And um, thanks for watching. All right, everybody, this is some of the stuff I'm going to use. That's the Sterilite container. Those are just some wire snips to cut the wire over here. And um, this is just a demonstration piece, but I'll show you that here in a little bit. Some heat tape, some basic connections. I use a little bit of double-sided tape in this video, some wire cutters, actually an old extension cord just cut off the end. And I will be using a thermostat that's up there. I won that from um, Inkbird off of... Um, Instagram so if you go check them out there's all kinds of giveaways they got Wi-Fi ones now they got tons of electronic products for you know like thermostats and that kind of thing and humidity readers and that kind of thing so go ahead and check them out if you want on Instagram and then um so these are basically just some of the things I'm going to use we'll start off with the tub I'm going to drill a hole inside kind of explain to you what I'm going to do with the heat tape and we'll get on with this video all right everybody this is the Sterilite tub that I'm using it's a seven quart this hit, this lid works really nice. It seals down really nice and it keeps the heat in for what I'm using. There's other ones too that got like a little seal around it. I couldn't find one of those, but this one works really good for me right now. And I don't have any problems keeping the heat in. It seems to work really well. So uh, basically on this, all I got to do is just drill me an access hole right here. And then uh, once I have my access hole here, I just kind of melted it with a, um, with a soldering iron to get a hole in there. Just as long as then I can get the... Um, the little contacts through that I'll be talking about here in a little bit and then uh, we'll put that off to the side right now and the lid because we won't use them and the uh, first thing we're going to do is worry about the heat tape this isn't the exact piece that I'm going to use but I'm going to basically cut it down to size to fit into here but the reason why I want to talk about this right now is is these ends you really have to worry about this heat tape if, if you're connecting it on this ends and uh, I'll show you how to do that here in a little bit or we'll talk about it and I have a video that'll show you how but if you leave this end open this isn't good these are both connected to electricity so if a piece of metal or you touch these ends you will get electrocuted if, if metal touches it it will spark it could catch fire so no matter what safety wise the connections on this side and the connections on this side both have to be covered with electrical tape to where it's safe to where there can't be any arc or nothing metal touching it so uh is what we'll do is i'll get this piece um of heat tape ready for what i'm going to use i'll show you how i'm going to use it and then we'll get it ready and then uh, i'll show you how i connected it so here we go all right, here we go. This is how I got it connected. I have it connected at two ends, and I'm going to explain to you why. The reason why is I, um, I'm going to connect another piece of heat tape to it for the lid, so we'll talk about this. I have a video that shows you how to hook these up, and uh, basically you just use these eyelets right here. Is what I do is I punch a hole where I need it to do um, with a, a hole punch, and you just slide that in, and you can use a, um, it's not really a rivet, but it's like an eyelet that you can squish together to hold it in. I have a video, I'll put it up in the description right here, that explains the entire process of how to hook this up, the safety of making sure that you get these covered up and that kind of thing. So uh, we'll kind of skip that part because that video is for that. So um, I do have it connected both ways, and I did use these ends. And these ends is the reason why I use them is because I can take this apart easy for cleaning. I could have left this whole cord, um, it would be hard to get it through here or, or whatnot, but if I use this, I only need a hole this big, not a hole big enough for the whole plug to go through. So then when I do here, let me hook this up and I'll show you how. Um, these are just, they're cheap, a couple bucks, you can get like 20 of these little connectors right here. 
And if you notice, I did use opposite connectors on both ends of this heat tape. The reason why is because if it's plugged in one end and I have the, the lid unplugged, if these touch right here, there's no metal touching. If I were to use the same male ends on each side and the metal touched, it could arc and cause a fire or, or just blow the breaker or whatever. So I always use the opposite ends there to make sure that we're always safe and there's nowhere for uh, any electricity to touch together. So we'll get this in here. This off to the side some more. And get to this. Like I said, we got our hole in here. So uh basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna feed these through. I made the hole big enough to feed one of these through and then have some wire. So then you get one at a time through there. Put that through there. See now this actually sits on the bottom, and is what I did too. Is I put two pieces, or not two pieces, five pieces actually, one on each corner and then in the middle of uh, just double sided tape. But I didn't take the sticky part off of this because I wanted to be able to take this out. But I want it to rise off of the surface to where it's not just laying down on the plastic. So then it's in there and there's still airflow underneath and there's no problem. And then these wires right here will go up to the lid, which I'll show you here. This lid right here is the same lid and it has these, um, it's um, raised up right here so I just put a piece of double-sided tape on each one of these corners check this out bang see and I got another piece of heat tape here which is sealed off at the both ends with electrical tape just like we talked about and then I have another piece of wire here and I, I ran along this the same line to where everything lines up the same some people say you can change it but I just line it all up the same to where everything's you know all in current consecutively to where it heats up really nice and then again i got my male and female ends here to where then i could just hook this up basically it's all just to uh for maintenance basically so i can take it apart and clean it and it's really easy i don't have to have it all connected to where it's um not on there you just connect that and then bang and now i got heat on the top and the bottom of the rodents to where then it's got a hole there's heat coming from both directions it'll it'll warm them up i could probably fit 20 rodents in here if i stacked them up six or eight you know in there and then a couple rows of them Geez, I might even be able to fit maybe 20 in there, 25 maybe, if, depending on how big the rodents were. So uh, that it just makes it really nice. So the only thing now that I have to do, other than hooking a thermostat up to it or some kind of a timer, which we'll talk about here in a minute, is I want to build a little shelf for inside of here. Here, let me unhook this. Like I said, when I'm working with this, now I can take this off. I can clean this. It's really easy to clean, and then I can take this part out. But I am going to make what is this right here and this is going to be um a shelf basically it just fits right down in here and it keeps the rodents up off of the plastic here that's kind of crazy right there but anyway it keeps the rodents up off the heat tape to where it's not just sitting there baking and it's about the same distance as the top to where they're cooking from the top and the bottom at the same rate and i'll show you how i make this little shelf these are really easy to do you could use quarter or the um the quarter or the half inch squares it doesn't matter it's up to you this is the half inch squares so let me take this and then move this right here. And then I have this piece right here. This is just a demonstration piece of showing you how I kind of do this. And this is where those little tin snips come in that I showed you earlier. These are really nice for projects like that with the thin nose. These are really good. But basically is what I do is I figure out the d dimensions of how, how I want this to roll. And I basically want the sides, I'll do this one to where there's too high and then we have a surface. So as what I do is all, I know I want to go too high. So I just cut out the corners. Just like this. And just like that, how I cut two and two, you cut all the way around. Let me cut these real quick. Same thing all the way around, like I said. This is just how I do it. You can do this part however you want. If you have, you probably use that light deflector or something, but that stuff's plastic. So this is metal and it's not going to, it's easy to clean, easy to replace and easy to make. It's really cheap. And then just bend over your little slots just like this. Just kind of bend them over to where it, you make a little square. And then it just leaves it to where it's not overlapping. You can even leave a couple tongs out to wrap around if you want it to be more secure. But basically just like that. And I use this same thing for my rodents too. Because on my rodents, when I use the half inch, the little ASFs, they'll climb up through here when they're babies. If you have a hide and they climb up, they'll get through into the food and they'll run around. So I make these and I cover the top of the food to where um, the little rodents can't get out. But I make them out of a, um, 
the quarter inch instead of the half inch to where it's smaller. But yeah, it's basically the same principle, but it's just like this. It keeps the rodents up off the, um, the heat tape to where you get really good circulation of heat. You could probably add like a little computer fan or something if you wanted to, but that'll make the whole project more expensive. So let's put it together. So with this right here, basically before I put this in, I'm going to use a thermostat, like I said. You could use, um, you have to use something. You have to use some kind. You don't want just the heat tape just to run continuously high all the time. It's just going to get too hot and it may melt. So you have to hook up some kind of a device in here. There's little temperature gauges that you can put in there to set it for a certain degree. and It'll give you an alarm when it reaches that degree. And then, you you know, you can uh, monitor your rodents after that. I'm just going to use um, an Inkbird thermostat that I want off of Instagram. These are about 30 bucks on Amazon. I'll put the link down below. It works really well. You can plug two different um, elements into it and uh, heat them up. All the settings I have it set for like 110, I think, or 120. And it just raises the whole temperature of the rodents. If I can get the rodents up to at least like a consistent 100 degrees, that's, that, that's a plus for me. It just takes a little while. As soon as you thaw them out and get them to room temperature, you throw them in here for a few minutes. And you let the whole chamber get up to temperature and then wait a little little while after that and the whole rodent will eventually get to that temperature depending on what size rodent you use and how cold they are when you put them in here the time is going to vary so you just have to do your own little testing on that and how far it's going to take but basically is what i need to do with this i need to get the thermostat or the probe from the thermostat inside of here so i'll put it through this way is what i do and i'll just leave it hanging i'll put it through one of these holes to where it's not resting up against the side of the thing i'll put my bottom in See, in this right here, this, you can have it doing anything you want, basically. And I'll just have it just basically laying here next to the rodents or whatever, just to where I get the, the temperature of the room, probably hook it into there, to wherever they, it'll give me a good reading of the temperature inside of here. So then we'll hook up. And like I said, I always have the Mitch match handles on here to where you never, um, no metal to metal is touching. So for wind maintenance and that kind of thing. Things dropped off. All right, but now I have both sides on there. I have my deal so I can just pack this full of rodents. I could make this um, shorter or higher depending on how many rodents I'm going to do. I only have the eight snakes, so it, this is perfect for my setup. I could do eight to 20 probably in here without a problem. Just line them up and uh, warm them rodents. You just um, slap the top on, give it a little while. Like I said, plug in your thermostat to your, your cord here. And um, as far as the cord here goes, it's the same thing. You basically, um, any kind of a, um, old extension cord or something like that, you can just cut the end of it off and then cut you a chunk, you know, six or eight inches for your, your little connections to each one. But basically, you just bear the wires and then um, put your end on and then crimp it and that kind of thing. You know how that kind of works. You just crimp these right on there. So, uh, and I have one already ready. Oops. So it's already got its two ends on there that match up with this here. So like I said, these connections, you don't have to use these, but it just makes it a lot easier for, like I said, taking it apart and maintenance for cleaning and that kind of thing. And then uh, you plug in your thermostat into there, plug the thermostat in, and there we go. We're going to cook some rodents. So I'm going to get set up here in a little bit, and I'm going to throw some actual rodents in here. I'm going to turn this on, and then uh, I there's no time lapse or nothing. I'll just kind of show you it all with the rodents in there. And then uh, after the rodents are warm, I'll show you a couple of frozen thawed um, feedings of the ball pythons. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this works for you. Like I said, please don't make one of these without using a thermostat or some kind of a thermometer inside of there that's going to give you an alarm when you reach temperature. Don't let this heat tape just run. So uh, hopefully this helps you um, warm up your rodents. Hopefully your snakes are more happy. Hopefully they'll eat better for you. And uh, hopefully you know that you enjoyed this build and you build you one. And if you do, let me know. I want to hear about it. Make a video. Do something. Show me. I want to know. All right, everybody. I got some uh, thawed out rats in there. I, I put them in cold water until they, they um, thaw out to room temperature. And then I'll throw them in here. So I got my heat tape connected on the top and the bottom. So uh, we'll go ahead and close that up. Make sure, once again, use the thermostat. The probe right now is at 75 degrees inside of there, and the temperature is set at 110. And um, we'll just check it after a while. It'll take a little bit for the container itself to reach 110, and then a little bit after that, the rodents will as well. So uh, I'll come back after that, and um, we'll, we'll, no sense in doing a time lapse or anything like that. I'll just come back when the rodents are warmer, and uh, we'll do a couple feedings, see what happens. So again, hope this video helps you, and... Uh, this is my rodent warmer. Works for me. If it doesn't work for you, 
build one. I want to see it. Thanks for watching. Alright everybody, that's my rodent warmer. I hope it works for you if you decide to make one of these. If you have any questions, I do have an Instagram down below. You can shoot me a DM and uh, if I can answer your question, I'll sure try. So uh, thank you for making it this far in the video. Make sure to check out my channel for other DIY content or reptile and rodent related. Like I said before, I do do live streams every Tuesday. Me and my wife, it's a fun time. We clean the, uh, the snakes and the rodents. It's really fun. And I also do live streams on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with Iron Dog Reptiles. We have what's called the Iron Animal Show. So if you like uh, reptiles, if you're into that kind of thing or have any questions or if you know anybody that does, please share that information with them and attend those shows. We have a lot of good times live right then and there and um, we can answer things for you and it's just a really good time. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and stay wild.